Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at a small project on our uh, Versys X300. Uh, I, can, I guess I can call this my project bike. I've been modifying it now for some time. And um, when I installed the T-Rex heavy duty skid plate, one of the side effects is that it has, um, it, it's essentially a large empty uh, metal bucket that, that lives underneath your uh, your uh, exhaust header underneath your bike and with that comes um, a lot of reflected noise uh, that used to be just going out in all directions and the skid plate itself at about 46 45 46 miles an hour has its own little resonant resonance um, frequency uh, where it starts to make this I don't know, it's kind of like a howl. And it's only in a, in a narrow uh, mile per hour band, but still it can be easily dealt with. So what I've done, um, good old Amazon, I rely on Amazon for a lot of simple solutions. I bought a, um, what's called a heat and sound insulation mat. And it's just a, it's a peel and stick um, it's not very big. I got like, I don't know, five square feet or something. It's a foam that's, um, has a, you know, adhesive back and it's supposed to be able to handle some heat and, uh, sound deadening. So what I'm going to do is simply on the inside of my, um, T-Rex, uh, heavy duty skid plate, there's, um, not much I can do maybe with this side, maybe a little bit of insulation. I'm going to put it on the inside where you don't even see it. But underneath, this is where the large metal bucket concept kind of comes in. The sloped underside here is quite large, and it's got just two small holes. I think, especially on this side here, I think I'm going to put a, uh, put a little strip there. On the very bottom, it's pretty extensive or you know pretty expansive and it's all flat um, again very few holes the front is enormous this is where the noise is actually coming from I've got this oil port a couple of allen, allen screws that hold this massive port on here and I'm thinking that that's what's resonating because it's only held on in two points that are oh my gosh probably separated by 10 inches or more which means this large piece of metal is is only fastened in two places and it's kind of like hitting hitting the sound off the headers and stuff with a with a, a plate that's not you know a part of the normal plate itself and then of course this thing comes way up it's got another big flat plate here so I'm not going to get too um, too crazy with the sound deadening just try a couple um, couple things and um, I'll be taking it for a test ride later but um, if it helps a little bit that's fine this is obviously preferential a lot of people you know when you put on the slip on mufflers and other things they want to make bikes louder in my case um, this one here is just uh, I guess my little cruiser obviously it's a venture bike and I've yet to take it much off-road um, because it's still got the stock tires on it. I do uh, have a set of tires that go on this bike and that'll be another uh, before and after uh, segment coming up. So stay tuned. We're going to get some of this stuff taken. Um, the fasteners taken off. The uh, skid plate dropped down. We'll see what we have to work with inside, the, uh, inside that echo chamber. Um, be back in a bit. Okay, I've now got the uh, skid plate off the bike and as I thought in taking a look at this little uh, trap door here for oil changes it's just open and flat and that's gonna be probably the source of my uh, 46 mile an hour buzzing. Inside the um, skid plate itself it's got a few chunks of rubber and <laughs> road debris. Um, I'm thinking we're not going to go overboard with this stuff. 
I went ahead and took took it out of the package. It's just a um, it's like foam. It's like it's a it's kind of an interesting foam. It's open cell, I think. It looks open cell. It's on a peel and stick backing. And I took a little piece here and I actually tried to burn it. I actually held you know a lighter to it. And not only does it not burn, it virtually does not melt with direct flame on it. And the minute I remove the flame, there uh, there is no flame on the on the foam. This is some interesting stuff. Uh, hope it works out. My uh, only other challenge here is to see if the self stick will s actually stick to the inside of my. Uh, skid blade because it's textured so uh, we'll get some on here and see what it looks like and especially on my trap door so um, back at you in a minute I think I recall saying that I wouldn't go too crazy with this stuff yeah so how did that work out uh, well let's take a look I started here with the main pan and I guess my final goal was to get a piece of sound deadening foam on each of the flat surfaces. And I'm, I'm not really totally done with it yet, but I've got little strips. I gotta cut some portholes on this one yet. I got little strips on the bottom, two, two uh, uh, slanted sides. Uh, this side here has some uh, interference with uh, the radiator, uh, hard, hard tubing. I left that side alone. This side here I just put a little strip on. I think a lot of my vibration is coming from the front because it's quite expansive and it's flat. Uh, sort of flat here across the top and that, that can act like a like a diaphragm, you know, vibrating. And then this cover was my other concern, so I went ahead and coated that cover with this, this foam. And I think this is going to probably work out fine. It went on easy. Um, one of the hardest things was if you get this stuff on your fingers, it, you know, the, the sticky part, it seems to want to stick to your hands pretty pretty fast. So be cautious of that. And I think it's stuck on pretty well. It's It comes off easily if you wanted to remove this stuff, you know, just scrape off the foam. And the adhesive I found comes off real easy with uh, just mineral spirits. So it's if I change my mind tomorrow and I want this stuff off, it's not going to be a big deal. So now the proof is in the pudding and it's row test time. Okay, after a uh, test drive and trying out this uh, heat and sound deadening uh, insulation or foam, seems like it works pretty good. Um, my buzzing at 46 miles an hour is gone, just totally not there. And then the other assorted, you know, uh, header noise that happens with um, the fact that the metal box, you know, the skid plate was all underneath it. Sorry about the plane. I'm still live near an airport. Haven't moved. Um, <laughs> every one of my videos. But um, I, I think it's a win. And if anything like this is going to be any interest, I'll put the uh, link to the material that I bought. It's not a whole lot of money. I don't know, $20, $25, something like that. But you can just cut it to size, uh, peel and stick. It seems to stick real well on the inside of the uh, skid plate. And it sticks real well on your fingers, too. Um, like I said, just a little bit of mineral spirits, though, and you can clean everything up. It, it's a piece of cake. So I've got it all back together. And the deadening, I uh, didn't do anything on this side, but the front, uh, the slopings, the bottom. The only thing that happened was the, um, right where the catalytic converter is, it must have came in contact a little bit with the foam. Because I had just a whiff of smoke where the uh, foam had to just kind of melt or burn or whatever away from that catalytic converter. But other than that, um, it, it was like for one minute, stopped. And the rest of it, I took a good look at it with a flashlight. Plenty of clearance. Uh, so anyways, it's all back on. And uh, you can see my other video videos on how I attached the um, skid plate to my 
Kawasaki uh, crash bars and now they're like ridiculously rock solid um, hopefully they'll hold up if I've ever set the bike over and of course I got my older um, video up on the fifth brace I added to the back of the skid plate to prevent the uh, fore and aft movement which seems to be the only design weakness it's not a flaw it's just a weakness with our four uh, heavy duty braces coming off of the uh, the uh, uh, M10 engine frame mounts uh, two mirrored on the other side and then my fifth brace uh, on the M10 center stand bolt and then my other video here, of course, on the more recent on the adding these brackets and these uh, these uh, aux lights for you know just putting an aux light on a on a, on a round uh, bar like on ATVs or trucks or motorcycles, whatever. Firming this all up. So, anyways, this was a fun little project. It, it was pretty quick. It's not real exciting, and uh, something like this interests you, then you know how to do it. I assume that most of the people, um, most of the uh, Bercy's X300 people, really won't care. But hey, it is what it is, and we do what our what we do with our bikes. Anyways, have a good one from the Dave's Garage. Uh, see you on the next one.